on today's episode, what the mass media won't tell you about the Florida condo collapse. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. The tragic collapse of the Champlain Towers in Surfside, Florida last week took the lives of some 160 people and destroyed a 13-story, 135-unit condominium structure in a matter of seconds. Now, the collapse of buildings with loss of life is common in regions hit by earthquakes or tsunamis, but this collapse was sudden, unprovoked by Mother Nature, and totally unexpected. But should we have expected it? Now, this kind of collapse is extraordinarily rare in the Western world, and for a reason. Civil engineers work with safety factors far beyond anything we see in manufacturing industries like consumer goods or automotive, and it's very common to see designs that are sometimes an order of magnitude stronger than the minimum necessary for support. Now, there are several reasons for this. One is that buildings have exceedingly long lifespans and that they can be incredibly difficult to repair or remediate once built. Another is that it can be difficult or impossible to inspect critical areas in the structure after the building is complete. In the automotive industry, we used to physically chisel apart automobile bodies to check weld integrity. Now, you can't do that with a skyscraper. The other major reason for extreme conservatism in civil engineering is the inability to predict the overall environment decades into the future. That's especially true of coastal areas like Florida, where notoriously porous rock, fluctuating sea levels, and hurricanes all play a part in taking down what man tries to put up. With recovery operations still ongoing and the recent demolition of the remaining portion of the Champlain Towers, it's too early for the forensic engineering teams to draw conclusions about the cause of the collapse. There are unconfirmed reports that columns contain less than the specified amount of rebar. Now, if true, this collapse may trigger a widespread and expensive re-examination of any structures built by any firm connected with the concrete work on this project. It also exposes two fundamental flaws, in my opinion, on the way buildings are built and operated in the U.S. One is that projects are routinely built by corporations that are temporary legal structures formed specifically for the project, effectively eliminating liability. Another is that condominiums are managed by boards composed of stakeholders. Although municipalities enforce inspection routines, in most jurisdictions, there is no strict legal requirement for condo boards to actually implement the fixes noted in an engineer's report immediately. Reinforced concrete structures in America frequently require expensive remediation due to water intrusion and corrosion of the steel reinforcement. Now, most people have been to an American city and seen the most visible effect of this, the spalling of concrete from columns and beams and bridges and elevated freeways. Now, in a way, this spalling is a good thing because it makes the need for remedial action readily apparent. Now, as I tell you this, there's been no reports of phenomena like widespread spalling in the reinforced concrete structures of the Champlain Towers pre-collapse. There have been reports of the failure of an underground membrane beneath the swimming pool designed to move water away from the structure. That may be critical. And that illustrates another problem for civil engineers. Later renovations or even landscaping can alter the way water flows in and around a structure, potentially causing damage invisible to the human eye. So can this kind of thing be stopped? More frequent inspections can help, as well as a closer look at what damage is defined as safety critical in municipal building codes. But I think the technology that's really needed is widespread adoption of high energy, penetrating concrete inspection systems that would allow engineers to see inside reinforced concrete. Now, technology similar to CAT scans can see inside six feet of concrete, but it's expensive. So much so that they're commonly used after damage is apparent to determine how extensive it is and to calculate a sensible remediation strategy. Now, in a well-designed building, something is very wrong if a structure showing minimal or cosmetic damage only to structural members fails suddenly and catastrophically without warning. If the Champlain Towers were not built to the structural engineer's specifications, no amount of routine inspection could have stopped this tragedy. The question then becomes, who inspected the rebar before the concrete was poured? I think we need to look more closely at how incentives drive behavior over the entire life cycle of a building, from architect, structural engineer, project manager, construction trades, and finally, active management of the structure as it ages. Now, our tendency is to attempt to assign blame to a single party, but as the old saying goes, success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series for the manufacturing professional, visit engineering.com TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.